Over off. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, a little disheveled today, but that's all right. Ooh, my mic's way over here. Hello. Whew, I'm... Hello, hi. I'm excited because today I'm starting off with uh, finishing up some manual tooltip implementing, oh boy, on my personal site. Now I'm going to be spending a bunch of time on TypeScript. Hi everyone, I'm Josh. I do open source and I've been slowly trying to find time to work on my personal site. Let's get this out of my face. So one of the little delighters in my design is this little tooltip friend here. There we go. And uh, yeah, tooltips are hard to implement yourself. There's no good native support for the type of tooltip that I want to do. I want it to be like just this little f thing that you can hover over. Um, and then with keyboard focus, you can hit escape. And then if I activate voiceover, nice little command F5 short banner, kind of setup. Work in, visited, link, vi vi visited, end of banner, heading level one, four items. Hi, I'm. Josh, period. Right, you, you are currently on a heading level one. Josh, group. group. Josh, end of. End Josh, of Josh group. group. AKA Joshua K. Joshua Goldberg, 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 Goldberg. Because Josh Goldberg, Goldberg was taken from. Tooltip. All right. You are currently on a tooltip inside of a heading level one. Ah, uh, disk, vi Chrome. Josh Goldberg, Google Chrome, Windows. Is... Code, code, opacity, oh zero. God. Select yeah, voiceover yeah. off. A little hairy. There it is. So, what I have to do. Um, so I, I hate this. I actually have two elements here. I've got a label element. Um, oh shoot, do I need a four on that label? What does that label do? Label four equals, yeah, I should put it on. And it labels password, which is the input, which is the ID from title. All right, let's see how voiceover feels about that. V v visited link v visited link new characters whoa you are currently on a text field open location t with f t ria text selected uh, dashboard see, which pre welcome to the chat room 10 31 uh, here very not josh group uh, visited link end so of band heading level one voiceover. four items hi i'm an open josh. heading level josh group josh you group. are currently on josh 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 jo hi josh josh, josh. end of josh Group, jo Josh, hi, Josh, end of, Good AKA group. Joshua K. Goldberg, okay. because Josh Goldberg was taken from, yeah, tooltip. Uh, you are currently expert. on a tooltip, inside of a, 10, voiceover yeah. off. I need to mute the speech, there we go. Elian, hello! I'm, uh, I apologize preemptively for the bait and switch. I'm only working on this because I wanted to get the tooltip functionality to work. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it seems seems to be working. Got this nice little focusable element here, and then if I use voice over, voice over on speech off. Oh boy, you walked into web accessibility. Thanks for joining. See that? I'm uh, I'm testing that if someone uses a screen reader, which is the tool I'm using now, you can or they can they can get this little tooltip here. So I'm doing this little UI voice over off treatment on my site. I'm gonna have a prettier squiggly line. Uh, eventually, but uh, for now, I want it to be kind of like the the editor squigglies you get in VS Code or other editors, where like you get this little little complaint here, and maybe I'll add like more content. But now it's just like me putting little fun remarks, like um, I put Joshua K Goldberg as my name because, or as my username because Josh Goldberg was taken. I don't actually go by Joshua; no one calls me that. Yeah, how y'all doing? The two of you. How are things? Oh, and now I I also like re-implemented waviness like three times in the project, so you're good, I'm glad to hear it. Now I have the distinct pleasure of finding all the places that I added this squiggly treatment and Ooh, how is the stream? Uh, where is that wavy? That wavy. Ah, there it is. So what I want is a squiggly as equals h1 
title equals the sponsor name. Blue Heart. Ah, oh, you published the origin story. Origin story. Awesome. Is it Googleable yet? Probably not. Where is it? Uh, this one. This thing. Live coding is a, a pita pain in the ass. Yay! What a great article. Cool. Um, what was I doing? Okay, so I was adding in the props here. So I got this cool little pattern. Um, Learner, hello, welcome back. Oh, it was a setup issue. That's good to know. Um, I almost forgot. I have to update the socials. Um, first off, finishing up some work on my personal site. Adding, a, adding fun tool tip to lighters. That's right, cool. Next. This thing. And I also post Foster Don. Ooh, I'll watch that origin story. Oh wait, did I already see this? I feel like I've seen this. No, I haven't. Awesome. You're telling us about... Um, uh, oh, Taz. Taz is a nice one. Ooh, let's minimize that. Don't need it. Whee! Get my... Uh, I wish there was a way to minimize from both corners. I got a, like a bunch of crap here that I don't want to see. Uh, oh my god, where's my profile? Yeah. Here we go. All right. So yeah, I've got this interesting pattern set up. Um, it's like pseudo styled system type stuff. But um, I like being able to put in my JS X, my props uh, attributes like font size and font weight, uh, as, as well as the like, uh, what, what did I call the other props? Info. Equals, I really despise asking for money, but the bills don't pay themselves. So yeah, um, I put props like font size and font weight on this general use text component, which then, um, then like lets you define the class. I'd love to make this dynamic, but it means that I can have like text as equals P, font size equals medium, where like the as becomes the dynamic prop. Uh, I always thought it was cool. So it extends text props. So now, oh yeah, text props with an as. Did I read Dan's article? I did, yeah. I read both years at like almost like the same day and it was really funny to me. Uh, I, I liked it, Dan's article was good. Do you have a link to that by the way? Is it is it published yet? Come on, JSX, there we go. Text props as. <sighs> so I got my squiggly props, which must be this thing. Then we have as. Props, squiggly props as. Oh boy, TypeScript. Yay, thanks. Oh, wait. Chrissy, you said it not, Elliot. I'm sorry. I misread. But yes. Uh, oh, thank you. All right, where's. How do we split props? This I thought was interesting. The way to split props of like known props and rest is the solid has this utility split props in solid.js. So the known props are. Uh, what did I want? Props dot, um, yeah, I care about info. So it's known props and then text props. So I got info and title. So here I'm saying my known props are like the ones I care about are info and title. So known props dot info and title, and then I have in my text, text as from the text props. Cool. And then it's probably complaining because font size is incompatible. Really. So I now need to 
Oh boy. What's this complaint? Omit. Consider adding undefined to the types of the target properties. Uh, the exact optional property. Oh my god. But where is the... What is the property that's actually wrong here? Font size. There it is. Oh no, what's wrong with your laptop? What I don't understand is text props is the same as squiggly props as, which is the same as text props as, whatever. I'm gonna TS expect error because I don't know how to get this to work. And gosh darn it, I don't have the energy and time to investigate. I will be soon, yeah, just finishing up some uh, personal <laughs> site work uh, here. Because I just really want to get my squigglies working nicely. Here we go. Sponsor. Please sponsor me. I really just want. There we go. Uh, but yeah, soon I will be, I promise. And if you look at TypeScript Open PRs with my name, there's one around um, completions list that I'll be working on. You know what? I'm getting confused here. Why is, why are the text props not forwarding through? That's weird. Because this should be like big and fancy. Solid JS dev tools. Is there an extension? Here we go. I'm going to time box this for another like, let's say eight minutes, 1050 my time. And if I haven't finished figuring this stuff out by then, well, Oh, uh, well. Do I get solid dev tools in an astro say? Nope, not well. Uh, let's just look at this. So if we console.log, no new props, text props from the props.title. So now we get, oh my God, it's not, um, it's not client interactive, is it? Gotta have the, where is it? Client load. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm really excited about this. Um, response me as each one, children undefined. Oh, here it is. Children undefined. Ah, it's not. Oh, wait, hang on. Don't props that title. Why is, okay, so text props, children is undefined. Ah, children equals known props dot title. Do I have to like explicitly put it because, what? Ooh, debug component. That's for debug component. Debug. renders any value directly into your component HTML template. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Unfortunately, I've already console logged, but I will keep that in mind. Thank you. Woo. Okay, so <laughs> here it is. The issue is that uh, I got two elements here. I've got a, uh, in the squiggly component, I've got, um, I got the text and I got the label. So I need to, I need to spread the uh, text props on both text text props but this is actually a label not as ah, not a what is yeah same errors before i'm gonna ignore it and the class come on nope Oh my God, this is, this dynamic component stuff is, uh, that's props.class. It's, it's surprisingly difficult. By the way, I know there is a class colon list utility, but it doesn't, it's not as friendly around like potentially undefined values. So I'm, uh, I'm out of here. I'm not using it. Well, what is happening? <laughs> I guess I don't need that actually. Come on. 
So if I put the here, let's move out. All right, so if I put the um, if I put the class, why you don't like uh, CSS frameworks? I'm right now. I'm not using a CSS framework. Eventually, I'll find one I like, but I just haven't found one that does all the things that I want. Why is this gosh diddly darn thing not full width? H1. Where is this label? Does it need width 100%? What is happening? Oh, position absolute. Yeah, I don't like string concatenation, but I, I definitely understand why you do it. What is going on with this label here? Uh, you know what? I'm just going to work in progress this. Oh, you're talking about specifically Tailwind, yeah? I got to tell you, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of not frameworks. I think Tailwind's awesome. Um, I think people who criticize it often have valid points, like having to use list of classes can be annoying. Uh, but there, there is a very nice advantage of being able to put all your classes on the component. Also, if you have a huge list of CSS classes on each element, you're doing it wrong. Uh, that's true for Tailwind, and it's also true if you just like use CSS and have a lot of styles per component. The right way is to use a design system. Um, the complete set of standards and like components. The problem with Tailwind is that because it's so beginner friendly, a lot of what fix ES on top of it. How did that get to be the title? Dev Agarwal, hello, thanks for joining. Uh, how you doing? Uh, faster Tailwind than component libraries. Yeah. My ideal would be a component library, kind of like what we have in uh, Codecademy, my former employer, where you can do some awesome stuff uh, really quickly. Let's look at the code. Like this is this is the idea. It doesn't come from Gamut, but Gamut does it really well of responsive props, where you can do like variants of things. Where's the? Here we go. We can do like uh, text boolean or center or like variant equals title Excel. Um, or then you could also do like this generalized box component, which has like, um, let's see, like as equals title. Oh, really? They removed a lot of the other things. But like as equals title, font weight equals large, like this stuff that I'm doing here. That's ideal. Recommend some trivia questions for tomorrow. What's the difference between Tailwind and a design system? Uh, and the sponsor is page working draft. Ooh, ecstatic.dev. What is this? That does just enough. All right. That's cool. Uh, I don't like separating cells. I want them as props. Ah. Close though. Work in progress. Progress on work progress. PR on the squiggly component. All right, as much as I'm enjoying learning Astro and Solid and stuff. Um, oh yeah, what is React Server Components? Uh, what did, what is React Create Class? The like original way of doing things in React. Why is it function component and not functional components? People always call it functional components. Philosophically, that's inaccurate. All right. Done with the personal site stuff. Oops. All right, so let's move on to the thing I actually wanted to work on today. Oh, by the way, I finally switched from um, Pandora to Spotify on my wife's like duo plan and Turbo Night Radio, so good. Love Synthwave. All right. Ooh, React's time travel. I remember when Redux time travel was like the thing. All right, got my TypeScript open. Let's see, github.com, Microsoft actually pulls Joshua Hagelberg. It did take me a decade to switch off Pandora. And you know what? I, if Pandora wasn't falling apart in front of us, I would still be on Pandora. Look at this user experience. You open the Pandora, um, you log in, 
and then it just plays. And if you were already logged in, it just literally just it plays. I don't care about my music that much. All I want is just a vibe for background music. So like down tempo or like beautiful piano or whatever. And it irks me that Pandora is like getting buggier over time and clearly like that as well funded. <sighs> Life is hard. Oh yeah, Lerner, where are you? Oh, that doesn't have Pandora. Because that's another annoyance. Like whenever I travel, there's like a 30% chance I don't get Pandora. Okay, so I'm moving on to a uh, TypeScript PR of mine. What is this actually doing? India. <laughs> also, hi, adjective Allison. Welcome. Thanks for coming in. How are you doing? Yeah, so filter out types for me to send import suggestions. If you're in a JavaScript file and you start importing things or like ask for the like, what could I import from some location? It'll suggest types, even though in JavaScript, you can't do that. So filtering out types from import suggestions. Is this person on Twitter that I can call them out? T.me. Oh, St. Petersburg. And I don't have Telegram. Car show, comrades. Okay, just kidding. That's what I said is very rude. There's a difference between being Russian and being uh, communist. Sorry. <laughs> Turing about types from ESM, import suggestions in JavaScript. I took a few years of Russian in high school. No Deezer, no Spotify till pre-final year. Ooh, rough. Ploha, as they say in the Russians. Okay, uh, cool. So let's, I don't even remember. Like it's been like more than a day. So like, what is this PR? And let me just uh, post it in the chat. Cool. Learner, I don't know about you, but I'm having a great time. Plus one, I hope everyone is. Hereby, that's like the build and install, or just build stuff for TypeScript. So when you're in a JavaScript file, unless you're in a JS doc type import, type only declarations are filtered out of completion entries. And the way I did this is in the completions file, which is under services, the stuff that runs in your editor, 2070, uh, let's see, 2087. When we look at What's this function? Get completion entries from symbols. So when we get a symbol, which is like the description of something in the type system, like the metadata about the type, sort of, uh, we look through all the symbols related to a module. So all the things that could be exported from module, uh, we filter them out if, um, so this is existing code. This is like, if we couldn't figure out how to display the symbol or if it's like an object literal method or like some other weird thing, like a global, we care, we don't care. Uh, additionally, I'm saying if it's not in a type only location, so like if it's not in a JS doc comment, but we are in a JavaScript file and the symbol doesn't have a known value declaration. So if the symbol is only a type and doesn't also have like a variable or class or something associated, then we continue, we, we don't look at this thing. Um, so Anderis Mateus, uh, great, great individual here, this guy, says, what about name traces? And then also there's the suggestion from the TypeScript people that, well, there's actually already a thing for this. It's a uh, symbol, where's the, where's the conversation? Symbol.flags and symbolflags.value. So I should be able to, in theory, replace my code Uh, with uh, symbol dot flag. So if the symbol has flags and the symbol flags doesn't have value or symbol flags dot value module see, without formatting, hereby run tests, tests equals completion. Oh, Pandora is your first service. What a, what a great, great thing. Oh, Deezer. What is, why only one ampersand? Great question. 
Ugh, I hate how the TypeScript local builds are blocked on unused values. Sometimes I just want to muck around. So this is a JavaScript thing, fun fact. It's not a TypeScript thing. Um, where was I editing? It's used quite a lot in TypeScript, apparently. Uh, <laughs> symbol flag, uh, like 50 something. Oh my God, that's a horrible typo. Um, there we go. It's saying uh, the bitwise and. Get that good and the end article. So TypeScript uses a lot of um, oh my god, where is it? Here we go, bitwise and um, a lot of like integer arithmetic of like quickly checking whether some flag is set. Like if you have a lot of flags on a symbol value, they can be any of symbol flags. Not like is it a property? Is it an enum? Is it a function? Blah blah blah. All these different things. It is hackish. But it's also like really good for performance. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I don't use it in my code because I like never write like performance critical stuff. But TypeScript's pretty performance critical. Uh, so, um, I want to. I like made the change suggested. I want to test equals JS file. So any test that includes JS file, like this JS file import no types. And the way that TypeScript tests are set up, there are a few different variants, but oh my ZH, if so, wondering what thing that is, I like it. Hi, thanks for chatting. Catrones, Catrones. Um, I don't, I've used oh my Zish before, but uh, no, this is just like stock VS code. It's just ZSH. If do, if so. LOL. You yeah, know, I just I normally don't theme things, I just go with stock. Alright, so your by baseline accepts. Oh my posh. Like, yeah, that's that's good stuff. I the only like I don't like customizing because I like being able to switch between computers a lot. Um the hmm, the uh the the main fancy thing I use is warp the terminal because it's pretty great. I've used fig before and that's great too. Warp dev. I use warp. Awesome. Fig. Is it fig dev? Fig terminal. Fig IO. Yeah, both are pretty nice and snazzy. So far, I've just used warp for a little while. All right. So the problem here, so the way this test is set up is that uh, we in for slash, hence the reason why it's in this for slash directory, that's the term for the type of test, we declare a bunch of things about files. So we declare that the tsconfig allow JS option is set to true. Then we say in the file name declaration is TS, we export a class test class, a value, and so on. And then in file name AJS, we import from declarations, and this little indication says this is where my cursor is. No, not a hijack at all. I do this all the time. I'm really bad at this. So then verify baseline completions. Uh, that's what this is. But unfortunately, it's looking like uh, my test baseline is complaining that, oh, now it's also including declared interface, declared type, and so on. So I think I might have messed up with symbol flags. So maybe if symbol flags doesn't exist. Ooh, auto-completed CLI flag with one-liner hints per flags from the man. That's fancy. All right, so... Am I doing this right? And symbol flags dot value. Yep, that's that's all over the place. So save without formatting. So the weird thing is um, checking whether there's a value doesn't seem to be. Aha! Awesome. So this 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 works. So I shouldn't have checked whether it's a whether symbol dot flags exists. What does bang bang do in JavaScript? I love these questions. Bang bang, or exclamation mark, exclamation mark, is two bangs. Each bang is the inverse of the thing before. It's like if you open node and then do like x equals three bang x, it's false. Bang, bang x is true because bang false is true and bang true is false. So it's just a way of coercing something to a Boolean. Oh yeah. The exclamation mark after a thing is a TypeScript type system. 
Uh, so yeah, bang bang x is just turning x into whether it's truthy or not. Bang bang false is false. Bang bang zero is false. Bang bang one is true. Bang bang. Awesome. So yeah, so this is a fun thing. If there's a namespace that doesn't have anything in it, it's actually type only. Like, and I, this is something that I learned only recently. I like never use namespaces, which is like this silly old type suit construct stuff. So in the compiled job, it's going to be like export const hello equals true. It creates an object with a dot hello equals true. But if you don't have anything in it, it's not, it's omitted. So test space type only, test namespace with value. One, two, three, four. Value. Test value in or equals true. And then I rerun my baselines. It's an is exist method in order to get a Boolean for an if statement. Yeah, it can be used in if statements and whiles and fors and so on. Yep. It's like a fancy is if exists. Awesome. So it looks like my uh, namespace stuff worked. I'm gonna run tests equals, just like run um, plea. So like anything with completions, capital case C, lowercase C, and like maybe some random other things. Make sure all my test cases work. AOT versus JIT while this is running. So AOT compilation versus JIT or JIT compilation. Head of time or AOT is when you compile code before it runs. JIT or JIT is when it compiled and optimized as it runs. Uh, browsers typically do JIT um, for JavaScript because JavaScript is a scripting language, but uh, like we can spend a little time while it's running to figure out how to make it faster. Um, I'm not a compiler expert though, so I'm not gonna weigh in on the debate. Sorry. And okay. So yeah, this is what I was scared of. So if I look at some existing baselines, so works when files are included. How did I even get to this? Here we go. So like the actual unit tests here. By the way, chat, if y'all want to weigh in on the AOT debate versus JIT, that's, I would love to see what y'all think about this. Okay, so for some reason, we're no longer spitting out reactor router here, but we are here in the, what array is this? The same array, it's just shoving react and router to the end of the array. So uh, that's weird, but I guess that's fine. Baseline except, no. Okay, so we got a couple of unit test failures in import station statement completions. JS.TS. Oh, this is funny. Oh, I haven't used Angular in H's. <laughs> so here we're, we're um, this thing is making sure that you can force, like in a force slash case environment, it's very trying that you can import React, whatever, from React. Uh, but they're declaring an namespace that doesn't actually have any values. So export uh, const React, uh, whatever, class component. Okay, and now if I run, what is J-M-A-O-T-C? Is that on GitHub? Nope, oh, maybe it's a typo. Oh, it's a Java thing. Well, in that case, ha <laughs> ha. Not for me. All right. So 
So these tests are running happily. Projects are running. But now the problem child's for slash. Ah! Is there a separate, is that a different one? Import statement completions two. Aha! Yep, similar test, same thing, namespace without any stuff in it. Save without formatting. So, and I want to run tests that have underscore JS of the name, so that should be this and a very few others. Much faster. Nice! Wow! So, I'm just going to run all tests now. That'll take a little while, so I can recap and just for myself refresh what I actually did. So instead of using this uh, symbol may have value declaration function, which I actually need to remove since it's now unused. Here we go, save without formatting. Um, I'm just checking whether symbol flags is symbol flags of value or has symbol flags of value with bitwise. The book feels great. I'm so glad you like it. Fun fact, you can pirate my book if you, if it's like a cost prohibitive thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how, but it's not difficult. I have reported quite a few piracy links that you can find on Google. Uh, oops, to, to my editors and they've done nothing. So, but I'm glad you bought it. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, I should tell people like, if you want to, if you want to support me, I, I really do appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Cool. So this feels good. I'm uh, T I L. But I'm worried because I, I remember there being like weird different shenanigans with these tests. So I don't know what's going on here. Hmm. All right, well, anyway, let me just check if I got other pull requests that have stuff mentioned. So, oh yeah, allow tuples to have named and anonymous members. Fun fact, uh, in tuples, in TypeScript, you can't mix and match whether they have named members or not. Like my tuple, and a tuple is a fixed size away, so you can say like, this is an array that's like a string and a number. And you can give them labels if you want, like first string, other number, like that's, it's just a nice documentation thing. But you can't mix and match. You can't say like the first thing is a string and then the other, it doesn't have a label. You got tuple members must all have names or all not have names, blah, blah. And then they finally said, yeah, it's, it's fine. It takes a little bit of work, but we can, we're okay with people who move in that restriction. And, waiting on reviewers. So that PR is, ooh, SEO for my username isn't great. Oh, it's the worst. You're talking about me, right? Uh, yeah, this freaking guy. What the F, man? A literal terrorist <laughs> attempted. Uh, who's not even as old as me, I'm 93. Ooh, Frank Goldberg has an article. <laughs> yeah, really upsetting. Oh, geez. And then the, uh, I should really know index my full screen Mario thing. I'll get my site taken down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, hey, Nartsy. Good to see you again. Uh, if I did, a, if you did a blog series on getting started in open source, what topics would you focus on? Ooh, I will do a blog series on getting started in open source. That is, I plan on it eventually. Um, hmm. I'd start, I, I'd start with telling people to focus on the fundamentals, like whatever you are, let's say dev or designer, like it can be hard to learn the basics in, in the open. Like if you're a dev learning like variables and for loops in JavaScript, it's like, I would suggest do your private learning there, but like for actually getting started, the second thing would be like, ask a lot of questions, be okay with not knowing things, learn and investigate. If you ever get an error, investigate why it happens. Uh, but yeah, basically the, there's a great GitHub open source guide that I've been sending to people. Open source.guide, really highly recommend this. 
Ooh, what is Utter Ink? Good question, by the way. What topics for open source stuff? Oh, Unicorn Utterances. You're, yeah, Corbin is awesome. Awesome that you're writing an article for them. Oh yeah, I really liked Corbin's, uh, or Crutchley's advice thing. This was great. Are we there yet? Oh no, we have some test failures. So what I'm gonna do is here by baseline except early to get those baselines visible. So what is this? Require add new. Oh, they're not baseline tests. They're just like this will fail on its own. If I run tests, reading stack traces, that's good advice. <laughs> yeah, Corbin is intense. Test equals completions import require add new. Hereby, it's like Gulp. Uh, it's like this little task runner that the TypeScript repo uses. Gulp is a task runner. So you do like hereby run tests. And somewhere in the repo, there's like a hereby hereby dot whatever, hereby JS file that like defines that like run tests does this stuff. Ooh. If you start running out of ideas about being a beginner, perhaps you are now whatever's after a beginner, intermediate, advanced, whatever you want to call it. All right, <sighs> includes completion X not found. Okay, so here, it should be x, and we're not getting a completion because we're in b.js and the other file is a.js. So I'm wondering, maybe there just isn't a symbol. So I'm going to debug. I'm going to do hereby tests. I think it's, what is there? Inspect there, my language flag. Yeah, patch to node process. So now I'm debugging, so. In VS Code, I can pause the text execution when it's running through my files and look at what stuff there is. All right, so the symbol, oh boy. Let's see, how do I have a breakpoint there? All right, so the symbol that we're continuing with is escape name x, symbol dot flat debug flags is export does not support default modifier. This is like this nice little TypeScript utility or alias or alias includes or modern member or class or classifier or all assignment. So TypeScript isn't putting the value flag on um, this escape name X, which we can conclude is must be happening because It's the module exports? Huh. I'm gonna write this in the issue. We were talking about this in the PR. Where's the thread? Okay. More deeply, when we have a, a JS file with module.exports and the file is Okay, so the test is completions imports. Yeah. It's when we have a JS file of module that exports. The flags on this symbol are plain text. Do -do -do -do. Put flags. Note that value isn't there. Serial complainer. <laughs> thimble? My, what's Thimble? Mozilla. Oh, it's an editor. Ha! Huh, that's cool. Uh, browser font looks a little tiny. Oh, sorry. Is this... Uh, are you saying my browser font? If so, I apologize. I keep forgetting to zoom in. Please let me know if, if I'm too soft or too loud or too zoomed or not zoomed enough or whatnot. Okay, so there's no value flag when we're exporting X from AJS. But um, I'm wondering if the the target, like the file we're importing from, if it's if it's a JS file, then like maybe we even don't need to to care. We're in BJS. Ah. 
And I want to see, do we already get information on the target, like the file we're importing from? Doesn't look like it's anywhere here. Does the symbol say what file it's from? Got a declaration. So I think we could do, what's it console? <laughs> symbol dot get source file. Symbol source source symbol dot declaration value value declaration does that exist? Nope. Declarations zero dot get source file. Aha! So we can get the source file of the declarations. <sighs> but Okay, so what I guess I could do is, so the right fix would be to investigate whether this const x equals zero, whether this should have, its symbol should have the value flag added. Um, is symbol, but for now I'll put is symbol from source file symbol. And let's make that function. Oh, that's way too far away. Uh, see if I can define it somewhere around here. Uh, const source file equals symbol dot declarations zero dot get source file return source file. So bang, bang, crossing this to a Boolean. And, uh, oh my God, it's simple from source file. It's simple from JS file. Is JS file, is in JS file. So I really should call this is simple in JS file. Source file. Oh, it already supports undefined. So I, oh, I could just one layer this. Cool. So actually I don't even need this function. I can just say directly is simple in source file equivalent. Save without formatting. Okay. CVS is utterly painful. You're talking about the giant receipts. Are you talking about CSV comma separated values? So let's rerun this fella. Put that terminal away. Oop, I ran in debug mode or inspect mode. Yay, it passes. All right, so now I'm gonna run test equals completion for all the completion tests. Oh, CVS the version control. I don't even remember what that stands for. In current version system. Oh man. Are you working in CVS? What's what's going on there? Mm. Here by baseline. Except now we have oh, we have a new failure. What's what's it complaining about now? Adjective, are you adjective? Are you uh, reading my blog? If so, thank you. <laughs> Maybe this, yo, body image issues are not fun. They're not the worst, but they're not great. All right, so it's not a baseline. Oh wait, it is two different drives of Windows. Why does TypeScript have a two different drives of Windows test? What hellscape did the Microsoft developers have to go through? Okay, new baseline created. Here by baseline except. What? It says new baseline created. All right. But there's no baseline. Okay, so I'm just gonna. Uh, work, oh, works when files are included from two. Okay. 
Working on legacy code, that's a hell I don't plan on ever getting back to if I can help it. Uh, you know what? It's this thing, baseline TS server logs, completions, works for blah, blah, blah. And I see a React index DTS. So let's look at local React, React index DTS, content, is there a namespace somewhere around here, a module. Where is it? React DTS, is there like a fixture file? Content, path, local app types, React index DTS. For its star is prompt. Maybe it's because this is missing. Export class components. Now let's rerun. Oh shoot. I I forgot to remember the test name and I now it's gonna run a bunch of other stuff. You didn't see any starter-friendly issues on TypeScript repo. I don't recommend starting on TypeScript as a first open source contribution. Sometimes there are like like little things, but um, most people I've talked to are intimidated by it, which makes it hard for them to, to get started on it. Um, I'm not saying they should be intimidated. I think if you have the confidence and willingness to learn a lot about ASTs, TypeScript can be a very good open source first repo, but like it's, it's a little bigger, it's got more cruft, um, so like, a lot of people get scared off. So just preemptively, I say, consider working on something smaller, but if you really want to go for it, it's a great place. Um, works for fun. Can I do like tests equals works when files are included from two different drives? Can I just run this one test? Yay. I've been working with super hard on my to-do list, organization of work. Ooh, what is my permanent record of tasks and is it indexable data? So I use a Notion sheet. Let me just, uh, I'm gonna make a version of it that you can see public. Filter, uh, let's see, visibility is public. Here we go. I got a few private things in here I don't wanna share out. But yeah, um, I just use a Notion board. I know it's silly. <laughs> um, I know they're like actual things for this, like Todoist and Trello, but I really like Notion. All my stuff is integrated with it. Um, thank you for saying that, Learner. I, I'm actually doing great. I don't have severe health issues. I have in the past uh, for brief stints uh, and like long running like insomnia or depression, but those I've gotten a really good handle on. Not having a stressful job is really nice. Um, so life is good. Uh, ESL, TypeScript ESLint is a great place. Also a little intimidating because like it combines two tools you gotta learn, but like we, we try very hard to be a place that people can come to for a first issue. Intimidating, something being intimidating doesn't mean it's bad. It just means people perhaps unreasonably get scared of it. Uh, it's like a cat being scared of someone giving them food. It's food. Why is this failing? Okay, I'm just gonna inspect this because I don't know what's happening. Sorry, you, you've got health issues, by the way, that sucks. Oop, inspect, Oop, run tests, inspect. Patch to node process. I'm always surprised when people read my long personal blog posts. Oh boy, console logs, whoa. whoa. All right, so we expected, ooh. what the hell is this? Get out of here, little dingus. Uh, current directory, okay, let me replace whack rfn with new lines. Ah. <sighs> Before request, and then after request, we get, what do we get? Okay, so source app, react index DTS, we just, oh. And then we have react component like prop types index DTS. 
Ah, so prep types was the thing that only has types. It doesn't have any completions here. Browser router, where does this come from? Oh, from React Router DOM. Okay. So the issue was my prop types aren't exporting any actual value. So we need to also export const prop types equals something because there is actually a prop types object that that old package has. All right. Do I have a JSON feed or an RSS feed? No, and I sure have been meaning to. Um, technically it exists, I think. Is there an RSS metadata somewhere? It exists, but it's been broken for like months and months. I'm redoing this whole thing. So like, uh, eventually it'll look like this and I'll have a blog here, but uh, haven't had time to finish that yet. You went to my GitHub, clicked to sponsor profile link to my plans link from there. Ah, oh, cool, thank you. I actually really appreciate you telling me the user flow because that's really good information. And we again don't have, so what is the completion after request? Provided types map file, types map doesn't exist. I don't understand this test. Bye, Lunar. Have fun at work. What is happening? <clears throat> I truly don't get it. Let's try debugging with inspect again. Okay. So what's this complaining or what's this saying? The response from the server is saying we have entries, react, router, as, asserts, async, break, blah, blah, blah. Uh, is there a component class here? So these are all keywords. It's an alias. Yield, aha, there is a component class with export and declare. And then there's also browser router. Okay, the file exists, expected. Why? And there's again, nothing after the request. I don't understand what this test is actually doing. So let's go up the call chain, right comparison, run baseline two, baseline data server log, complete. Okay. Works when two files included from two different drives of Windows. So what is this test actually doing? We go. So in our so our project root is the E directory. In Windows, you can have different drives, like the C drive or the E drive, like different disks, and they all have a letter in identifying them. Um, so the root is E. And then do we have like a C drive or something? Like lab types, local node modules, project root. Aha, global cache location is C TypeScript. And that's where your at types are coming from. So, okay. So the session, so at the very end, after opening the files and creating a, following creating a session, we then execute the completion info command. So let me shove a breakpoint in this thing. See what happens. Structured daily schedule. Good. For, wow, that's a really nice summary. Good for you, GPT-4. <laughs> Mind bugs. Yeah. All right. Yeah, my thing is I just don't like having stuff weighing on me. I like minimalism, cleanness. All right. So, okay. Whoa. It never actually hit my continue. That's weird. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hereby run tests or hereby baseline except. I don't know if this is a test failure relevant to me. I'm gonna check it in and then see 
what happens. Oh, wait, ooh, we have other failures. So let's see, we got files, completions, import, underscore, Wi-Fi, add to existing. I think I already tackled this. Uh, here by run tests, tests equals add to existing. Yeah, that, that one is fixed. And then tests equals JavaScript modules. It's these last two. Oh, nice. Test equals Java, just to be sure. All right, so I think I'm good to go. Um, there's that one failure. Uh, oop, oop. Now is it showing? What? Did I? Oh, I changed the contents of this test. Oh, here's the baseline. That's cool. Um, okay. So I need to, in the unit test for this, right, the, uh, let me unstage all this stuff so I can see the changes. Yeah, the, uh, save it now. formatting, whoops. Next change, next change. Okay, yeah. Uh, there you go. The uh, formatting I messed up, so now the baseline has changed. Right, what was the test name? Tests. Test equals works when files are blah, blah, blah. NC Sander. Is this? Hello. Wait, your name is familiar to me. Have we interact? Wait, Nathan. Literally, yes, this is, hi, a member of the TypeScript team. Sorry for calling you up. Uh, so wait a second. That sounds like something I know. Yeah, I'm working on, and let me ask you a good point. I should post this in the chat. Uh, yeah, working on this thing. It just, people, what happened was people told me, hey, this thing already exists. I had seen it, it didn't work, and I didn't have the time to debug fully, but now I have time to debug fully, so I'm doing. Your ancient college username, nice. Positive effects attack. Allison, I'd like your statements. I wish I had the like stream yard little emphasis thing. Okay, so uh, here, I'm gonna run the tests, hereby baseline accept. So this test, this baseline from importing across drives. Um, here we go. What are the changes? So I, ooh, I added a new line somewhere, so let me undo that change. Oh yeah. Run it again. Come on, baseline update. There we go. Okay, so yeah, we have like more information. I added actual values to these imports and response is incomplete. What, what on earth does that mean? And then we also add the class component. New baseline created, but why is the Nathan, if you're able to help me out here, I'd love to love love to have that. Um, I'm almost working. It's just like almost working with symbol dot value. So it's some symbol flags dot value. So <laughs> posting that up. Um new baseline created. I just don't understand what it's complaining about. Thanks for hopping in. All right. Um, oh shoot, did I accidentally auto form? <sighs> what did I do here? I think I might have auto formatted. So TypeScript repo doesn't use prettier, which incenses me constantly and irritates me, inconveniences me. But then the result is sometimes I'll accidentally check in a prettier change and, or like a change from auto running prettier. <sighs> and then I'll have to go through and like undo a bunch of things. Oops, wrong completions file. Uh, weird. Huh. 
Oh, that's right. Someone mentioned the D-Prince. Uh, scared to get a room proof. Yeah. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but... Uh, it's better to have everyone hating the things equally than to have everyone using different stuff. <laughs> that's not always true. But if the hatred that everyone has is small enough, then... You know, life is good. All right. How did I auto format this? Hit set soft head. Okay, here we go. Here are the, the changes. Ah, reverts, all this crap. Thank you. And then VS Code auto formats. Love to see it. Revert all this stuff. And undo the auto format. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I really respect how super incredibly configurable dprint is. Also, it's from David Sherritt, who is a good soul. There's the git push. Right. Also, I should convert the PR to draft. I always. Uh, I always forget to do that. So let me just post this comment. Just saw the leak. What leak? Command KS. Oh, is that a... Oh, nice. Oh yeah, there it is. Command KS. What leak? The vegetable. Ah! 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 I'm terrified, by the way, of... Um... Of leaking like my like personal tokens or something on Twitch. It's so scary. There is a shortcut for everything. I feel like when I last tried it, it was like maybe it was on like Windows and it didn't work, or I just did it wrong, and then I like mistakenly, like a novice, just like gave up. That was really the pen oh the Pentagon has my address. Thank you. You got me, 21. Okay. Um, cool. So yeah, let me just convert this to a draft because I'm still kind of working on it. Oh yeah, Nathan, are you, you commented? You're managing things, thank you for that. All right, let's look at the diff. Yeah, so now, no. dang, dang it, there's always, sigh. Uh, there's always something. So we have the new test file. Uh, yeah, so node modules, react index DTS, the, the namespace didn't have any values in this one, so names that didn't have any runtime values, so it was being treated as type only. I changed curly made this completion more accurate. Makes that more accurate and therefore fail the baseline. All right, um, cool. So yeah, the, the weird thing is that, um, boop. Where was this thread? Yeah, so no other values. Oh shoot, I meant to test. I meant to mention. Is this intentional with JS files? All right, so. Ooh, conflicting files. I have to merge from main. Love to see it. Yeah, the source <laughs> one line. Thank you. I'm really excited about this. Um, if you're in a type only location, or if you're not type only, so if you're not in like a JS doc, because that can be typed, uh, but you are in a source file that is JavaScript, and the symbol doesn't have a value, and the symbol doesn't come from a JS file, then we ignore it. <laughs> yeah, it really is only one line once I fix line 2140. Let's go back to 140. Uh, looking forward to dprint. Get push. All right, what was I going to do? Oh, shoot. Oh, right, merge from main. Check out main, pull upstream main. Because I'm on a fork. Get pull, get push, 
What was my branch name? I have to delete some of these old branches locally. Uh, and we'll type type. All right. Yeah, that's now we'll go through the more like git checkout, no types in ESM imports, git merge me. Now we have a merge conflict. Oh no. I'm gonna accept the incoming change and then just like rerun the test. There's no need for me to go through this manually just yet. Ooh, I'm back. I forgot to get water before the stream and now it's too late. I'm going to stream for maybe another 20 minutes. Um, so if y'all have things that you want me to look at, let me know. Happy to take a look. What keyboard do I use? People ask this a lot. I don't have anything fancy. It's just like this generic Microsoft Ergo keyboard because I, speaking of health issues, started getting like early on early stages of carpal tunnel. It's got an emoji key though, which is really amusing to me. Uh, ooh. <laughs> Thanks for the review. Uh, value time. Why did I say, oh, as opposed to one time. Thank you, that's a good point. Oh, wait, nope, don't wanna do this in the commit here. An emoji key is great. When it freaking works, I'm pressing it now. It doesn't work on Mac. Yeah, otherwise, for a while I was using a SteelSeries M800, something like this. Uh, yeah, I love the emoji key. I just wish it worked. Never works. Also, shout out Contrada Socials. Ooh, thank you for posting that. Yeah, that's me. Um, the Mac emoji keyboard is not as good as Windows. Like, it works, but like sometimes it doesn't. Oh, there we go. Very annoying. Yeah, I should do like history grep or whatever, but uh, sorry. Yeah, my mic is between my mouth and the keyboard. If it doesn't let me, I'll, I'll move it up. Now you get to see my fancy schmancy LED lights. Thank you for following. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Cool. So Ben Josh, that's me. Um, all right, all right. So, Renan, thank you, Nathan, for the, the review. Uh, Twitch review as a service. Oh man, I just inhaled weirdly, and now my rib cage pressed into my lungs, and something happened. That was weird. All right. Um, anyone going to react Miami next week? By the way, I'm really excited about that. Okay, so. Oh wait, do I not have my socials in my Twitch bio? What is happening? Shush me. I have them here. Is are you saying it's a good idea to um, also put them like explicitly here? But um, have I? How do I set up a debugger in VS Code? Can you show me the launch? Sure. Um, Great question, thanks for asking. So TypeScript, the repo actually has a template because individuals tend to customize their launch that you can use. But um, I have a template TypeScript node package that um, I, oh, are you dyslexic? Is that a is that an accessibility thing? Like should Twitch put them like on a side or something? Twitch or emphasize them? I don't know, it's interesting. These are very de-emphasized. Cool. Anyway, yeah, so in my template type of node package, I have a launch file that's just like vtest stuff. But honestly, I can never remember. There are like all sorts of commands here. So I just go to the VS Code docs. Um, cool. Yeah, so I'm just concerned that I don't understand why this test is failing. So let me rerun the test and try to debug locally. Was it on this thing? Let's see how Right. 
So, oh, it works now. Dang it. Works when files. Redeemed, highlight my message. Penguin in a jar, it's been a little bit, welcome. What, uh, what did you just do? This guy. Did you just highlight your own message saying this guy? I'm so, so confused. <laughs> I don't understand Twitch well enough. All right, uh, tests. Redeemed, highlight my message. Oh yeah, so the longer you stay on my stream, the more points you get, and then you can redeem those points for like emojis and message highlighting. Is that a, is that of, of value to you? Oh, getting overheated. All right, so it looks like the tests are passing. Just here by one test, so that's nice. <laughs> cool. All right, so that makes me happy. I got 13 minutes left. No one asked anything that I haven't answered to my knowledge. Let me know if I missed stuff. So yeah, um, I'm gonna switch tasks actually and then go write a uh, blog post. Waiting for this to finish running tests on the server. So there was an, a recent teach you how to Dougie. I'm not gonna do that as I do not myself remember how to Dougie. I did at one point and I can actually vividly recall impressing my friends with uh, my booty popping at one point in time in college. Uh, unfortunately, the blog post is going to be in my old... Eh, it's 69. Nice. My uh, old blog, because I haven't finished setting up the new one. But uh, I have this TypeScript contribution diary series um, that I like to contribute to once in a while. Look at freaking Jerry. He's sleeping in the window. Actually, can I show you Jerry? Let me open my OBS so I can preview what I'm doing. There he is. That's Jerry. Shoot, now my webcam is off. <laughs> Life is hard. All right. Um, yeah, so whenever I get a PR merch type, I like to blog about it. It makes me look good. And also, I love the idea of uh, I don't know, making this stuff more visible to folks because people get intimidated by TypeScript, but they really shouldn't. Like, it's a great repo, great team to contribute to and with. Can I tell you what Mastodon is? Yeah, do you, to, do you use Reddit? Um, I guess for those who don't use Reddit, Reddit has a system of like subreddits where like each has a topic or area. Like, I really like the writing prompts subreddit. Um, Mastodon is like Twitter. If you had a bunch of subreddits, but you could see things from other subreddits constantly. So like I'm on the free open source software instance of Mastodon, Fostodon, and I can look at all the other posts from people on Fostodon, but I can also like follow and subscribe to people from other places like the, this UK thing. And hi, Nathan. Um, otherwise it's basically Twitter. Like that's what it is. It's just like a bunch of instances of Twitter that can talk to each other. So you can like completely ignore different instances or stuff like that. Distributed Twitter, yeah. And it's called Toots instead of Tweets because some streamer thought it was funny and I agree, it's pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, uh, so now I'm, you started on there before Twitter, that's so funny. Um, blog post on. So now I'm gonna write a blog post. Seems to be working. While the tests are running in CI, I'll get started on the contribution diary blog post. Boop. Oh yeah, and you can edit toots in Fostodon, and this has this awesome feature. Oh my god, I love this. Let's say you like, uh, let's say you messed up on something, and you want to like edit it. It has a delete and redraft feature for toots. Oh, love it. All right, so what did we do in this issue? Uh, oh, look at that, two little sparkles. Oh, and Nathan, you reviewed this, thank you. All right, so, um, we'll start. Uh, let's see. Accounts are centered on an instance, which means it's a little annoying to move them between instances. Uh, oh, it's in Ruby. Yeah, that's why I haven't contributed yet. 
Uh, oh yeah, I mentioned this early in the streams. Stream. Uh, remove use before define. Oh no, I didn't mention this, so I mentioned another. Okay, let's clear out this blog post. Let's just guess the publication date is like end of this month, whatever. To do image. To do title. TypeScript contribution diary. Uh, remove. Moving. Use before define errors for const nums. Cool. Right, I'll get let y'all chat in the chat because I'm not familiar much with blue sky and all that stuff, but eventually I'll look into it. it looks cool. All right, so problem statement: TypeScripts in a, TypeScript supports the concept of constant enums. enum objects that are completely erased when the code when compiled. Chop the scripts. So useful in situations where you want to have, I don't know how to describe that. Okay. TS, const enum fruit, apple, banana, console log, apple, fruit dot apple. Then the resultant would be console.log, apple, zero. Is this a learning TypeScript article? No, it is not, unfortunately. Um, although I did recently publish one and also typo in the tweets and only noticed like an hour later, very upsetting. This is on my personal blog, Gold Blog, aka blog.joshuakgilbert.com. Wee! Uh, my new one, the next one, uh, it's going to have like a separate section for the TS contribution diary so you can like pin a like context info post or some such. All right, so let's see. I got yarn stuff. Freaking. I also am very much looking forward to uh, switching my blog from Gatsby to Astro because freaking Gatsby is falling apart. Like I, I, it's got all these issues. I tried updating to the latest. Anyway. So, uh, const enums, when I install, are useful in situations want to have an enum to describe a shared set of values, but don't want to um, create runtime objects. Values that refer re references that to the enum values are replaced with the literal enum values. In the JavaScript code. Server not found when going to the blog. What? That ain't right. You. And has it started yet? Nope. It's this like weird bug where I like sometimes Gatsby thinks I can have sub fields of image, sometimes it doesn't. There's the freaking local host. And then I get this thing. Okay, here we go. Fine. Next. Before, after. Uh, I'm going to add myself a to do. To do, use a table. Need to figure out syntax highlighting there. Uh, cool. This issue, TypeScript, use before divide, issue, points out that 
Uh, TypeScripts. Um, TypeScript. For ports and error, if you use a, if you refer to a const enum before code before the enums declaration. TS. I think I have two. Do I? I don't. I don't have two slash set up for this repo. Annoying. But like nice system for showing complaints. I don't like foo, so I'm gonna place this code snippet with my own fruit. Apple. No. Apple. Ooh, Rizal. Could you post the link learner? I, I love Rizal and Astro and all those things. So, yes, please. Um, ooh. That error does make sense for non-const enums, but not because because they're a real value at runtime. But it doesn't make sense for const enums. Do I want a space there? Yeah, I kind of do. Camp the Goblin, hello. Thanks for joining. It's all right. I'm uh, waiting for a test run, hopefully to pass, on a one TypeScript PR. So now I'm writing a blog post about another. Moving these to find errors for cost enums. And I'll just repost the. Ooh, open source Friday. Sweet, thanks. That's the issue that, or the PR that resolved this issue. Cool. They are snow. And wouldn't exist yet if referred to before the declaration. They're erased. Okay, so um, note that TypeScript does have a preserve. Yeah, so fun fact preserve const enum compiler option, which we can read docs about on the ms slash tsconfig, go to preserve const enums. That indicates TypeScript should create an object for enums. I'm actually going to but there but their value is still in lines to the literal. The value references? Is that the, the right way of uh, referring to this? Preserve const. So we would still get, let me just pop this in the TypeScript but I have to get the actual code snippet here. Come on. Constina, preserve const enums. Here we go. Is there a Discord for people like all of you? Uh, is Corbin Crutchley's Discord? Unicode utterances, like kind of a, a hangout? I don't, I'm not a huge Discord person either. Slowly getting into it. I know there's a TypeScript ES Lint Discord, but it's very inactive. It's mostly just help and us discussing our how much we hate certain rules. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, I'm going to make this a table. This is annoying. Head, tr, th, before, after, preserve, const. I'm actually going to keep going. I feel good. Uh, yeah. 
I feel, I feel energized. Writing blog posts on things I previously did. Oh, this makes me happy. Ah, tea body. Is this auto format? No. Annoying. Gotta have my indentation. D code. Oh, let's see how this looks when we format it. It's gonna be it's gonna be horrible. Yep. Do I have any code blocks elsewhere? In? Yeah, I'm gonna have to mark a to do for the syntax highlighting. Probably like with a pre tag or something. Or I could just finish converting my site to Astro and it'll be much easier. Oh yeah, Fostodon is a Mastodon instance. Uh, that is like around free open source software, but yeah, Discord is more of like a personal chat. 85 filter, hello, welcome. I swear to God, if you ask what Astro is one more time, please do, please keep asking, it's really amusing to me. And I'm sure it's good market research for you. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not going to spoil your fun, don't worry. Did it just auto format my indentation out? What is happening? All right, so before, after, with just basic settings. Then after with uh, the fancy stuff. Preserve const enums. Wee. It is, it is removing my indentation. That's so rude. Ugh. Do I have like tables with any classes? I have class equals large. That didn't do anything. And formatting. Jeez, look at this terrible formatting. I do not like this. <laughs> I hate this. Yes, B, you're killing me. Let's uh, let's wrap these in pre, see if that fixes it for now. I'm probably gonna have to anyway. Whoa, whoa, what? Did... Code pre, pre code. Oh, I forgot a TD here, start tag. Well, that looks like crap. Yep. Let's switch, let's do this after the Astro switch. LOL. Yeah, so, uh, Okay, uh, where is the, the, the missing key here? And every time I refresh, my old, it's like not even the latest version of Gatsby complains. Okay, so, to do formatting and syntax items to set the switch. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Their value references are replaced with literals. Uh, so the issue was marked as accepting pull requests to remove the error in the, the use before the used before its declaration error for specifically const enums. <laughs> Houston's in the chat. All right, uh, cool. What do I normally run these with? What do I, uh, let's take a look here and get it out of here. Thumb statements, and then I like normally Explore the type checkers treatment of things and then uh, add tests. Cool. And oh, yeah, this was a fun one. So <laughs> it's literally just code reduction. My favorite kind of pull request. So digging in, I feel like I might have taken notes on it. I'm like off screen checking my personal notes to see if I have anything. 
related to this. Nope, okay. So let's go back to TypeScript and see how this stuff works there. All right, so how would I actually explore this? Um, so the actual complaint being made is enum used before its declaration. So what I would do is um, search for this, just like remembering my steps that I took in this PR so that I can uh, describe them here. Um, I would find it, I would find it here, enum used before its declaration. That's the only place this error message says. And I think all I did was just delete the Oh, you know what? I need to like, uh, I need to find, I need to go back to before, before this PR's commit landed. Cause uh, <laughs> I'm looking at TypeScript after the, right. so git check out whatever commit was before this. So, yep, this is in two locations. Uh, okay. So I found two locations. Found two locations. One of them, I remember this now, yeah. One was uh, Zolta flags and regular num. Other asserted result of flags and constant the bang bang. So, so can we just delete this one? Um, I deleted it, we ran tests and uh, did any tests fail? Yes, this one failed. So npm i Let's just see what happens. NKS, NPMI, hereby run tests. Tests equals, I'm gonna search for tests that include num as an enum with an uppercase or lowercase e. Speaking to the chat, yeah, I personally like Vercel. Um, it's developer experience is excellent. Um, but yeah, Cloudflare has some nice features. Cloudflare is like a little more established. I mean, I actually use them for my personal site because I haven't switched over to a Vercel deployment yet. Um, but they're both great. Like I, Codecademy used Cloudflare and we had a lot of really good stuff come out of that. All right, here by baseline except. So yeah, only, only, one, only one test failed. And the test that failed was this thing. Uh, with a removal of the enum used before its declaration for the const enum. Great, perfect. Did I add any tests? So viewed, viewed. Uh, is this new? Ooh, look, GitHub's freezing. I'm clicking and nothing's happening. Love that GitHub web UI. Come on, what is, what? Oh my God, when I clicked viewed on the checker, it expanded the entire checker file. Is that what happened? <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, TypeScript's checker.ts file, the type checker is quite large. Okay, and yep. And then I, okay, then I just added the test case. Cool. Looks good. Then I added the test case from the issue. Let's, uh, let's syntax highlight that actually in my notes. Yeah, I keep syntax highlighting notes. Okay. Um, block scoped enum there you before def dot dot j no. Block scoped enum bit used before def dot ts. There you go. So I just added, oh yeah, I added it um, as a 
like a thing in a different scope just to make sure that you can do it like outside of a return in a function. Yeah, all right, cool. So just copying these notes. Diagnosing the issue. Starting question. My starting question or investigating. Investigating. My starting question was where does TypeScript emit the emit the error thing for cost enum? I searched the code bases TS file type your code bases TS files for this nice little regular expression. So those words from the error with anything. Words in the error with anything in between them. That search found two locations. Ooh, why Google Cloud over AWS? Interesting. Other than like Amazon being evil, because they're all evil in different fun ways. All right, uh, let's search found two locations, both in source, is it source checker TS? Source compiler checker TS. The source code for TypeScript's type checker. Declaration. Actually, I can just and right next to each other. I can just put this one. Cool. Reading through, skimming through that code. Looks like, oh, what is this function? Inside a function called check resolve block scope variable. So it's going through the code. It looks like it was checking. Uh, like it was, oh, I'm getting tired. I'm going to have to stop seeing. Checking whether, uh, it was, how do I phrase this? Reporting on, reporting errors for a variable used before its declaration, if needed. So we're done errors, reporting error, any needed error for a variable used before its declaration. Phrasing. The first if was for a regular enum, and the second asserted it must be a const. So, so can we just remove the second one? It seems like we could could remove the second one. Was it that straightforward? Spoiler. Yes. Yes. Yay. Hi. All right. By the way, just checking back in on the uh, of the PR. How's it? How's it going? So that fest failure is uh, not related to me. It must have been like some noise or something. Let me. Okay. Cool. Let me just check here. Yep. Uh, collapse. Two different drives of Windows. Yep. Yep. Yep, now we include the component. Yep. Yep, I'm actually gonna move this comment up because uh, it shows up later in the review and someone reading these earlier ones. This explains this change also. I also made this change in a few other tests. Welcome back. 
There we go. Awesome. Yay. I think it's ready for review. Right. They move the buttons to different locations. If I'm drafting and undrafting. Uh, <laughs> I love this. Andorus does not actually, to my knowledge, remember the TypeScript team, but Mateus is just so gosh darn useful and knows so much about TypeScript stuff that uh, he's been reviewing my PRs. Very nice. That's the co-author. Cool, so that one looks good. Um, and now I've got this uh, blog post that I'm writing. Let me uh, throw up... To do be right. Yay! So I can add, get checkout, the TS contrib diary, use before define const emails. Get all in. Work in prop. This contribution diary post. You kept yours in draft? Your one? This country host on use before define const emails issue. Oh, I, it's not actually used before to find. It's uh, declare, used before its declaration. Have to. Name that. To check out the. Boop, boop, boop. Diary post on what is it again? Use before its declaration cost emails. All right, here we go. Now I've got the PR ready to, to draft. Nope, wrong link. Draft. All right. Ugh, I hate this freaking thumbnail that they do. Like, who wants that? Who wants my face that big? In progress, uh, contribution. I'm gonna finish after posting this. Gold blog. Gold blog. Right. Yeah, is there a open source community on YouTube blog? Yeah, um, <laughs> light mode, sorry. Uh, some things I just like, like for reading, like plain text, I like light mode. For code, I like dark mode. But sometimes I switch to light mode. Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, Y'all should definitely watch anything from anyone on the Astro team or Solid, Alien, Dangitanium, etc. It's good stuff. Cool. Wow, we got up to like 29 viewers of this. They never got my nose right. Wait, I vaguely... Yep, that's this thing. Yeah, that's so funny. It's been a while since I watched that movie. All right, so let's let's raid someone. Who should we raid? Cody Garden. That looks good to me. Uh, so this has been an absolute pleasure, y'all. I I really appreciated you all joining me. It's it's nice to Twitch code. Oh, they don't accept incoming raids. Who should I raid? Twitch.tv. Anyone doing TypeScript things? I like to find people who well, are in English and uh, <gasps> new codes with blog, code blog with React and Golang. That sounds good. Any suggestions? Dax just rated AWS. What is AWS? Like literally, oh, not Twitter, Twitch. Literally Amazon Web Services. Okay, sure. <laughs> Why not? Uh, Wait, is is that actually? So we're gonna talk about. Uh, no, I I'm not gonna, not gonna do the address. Sorry, Amazon is uh, just a little too evil for me. I, even though I know they're all evil and they're very nice, good people who are both well intentioned and making the world a better place, who work at Amazon. So yeah, let's raid pro evils with a Z. We all. Oh, I oh so milk. I follow them. They're definitely not streaming right now. Otherwise. Oh my god, I got a little heart panic. Uh, otherwise, I would have absolutely loved to rate them. Oh shoot, what was it again? 
Trophy fills with Izzy, right. Well, I will see you all there. Again, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, y'all, for, for joining me. Um, you can find me on... Ooh, where is my stream manager? You can find me on all sorts of things, uh, like socials. Oh, yeah, pro evil. And then please do, if you find me useful, consider sponsoring me or subscribing on Twitch because I don't have a real income source other than open source. Bye!